by the book and she said, yeah, now, she was a high school principal in Troy and she said, yeah, now, she said, she, the, she her kids talking about, uh, she asked why somebody wasn't there and they said, well, so-and-so's booking. And she was saying, booking? Like I'm but they were talking about studying. Now she said the kids say booking when they're talking about their studying. Oh, wow. And she said, so it's just tell something how words change. She mm -hmm. said, because when they said he was booking, she said, booking? Where he going? You know what she <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, so it's just funny, though. But it's funny that you, because you're much younger than me, that, that you still remember booking. Back in there, something. I can't from the believe that I got an old song with that. I know. That's why I always <laughs> tell my daughter she's been here before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. And then times 1.5. It's a formula. That means if you do this, this, and that, you're going to come up with the answer. And it says that if you multiply pi times the radius squared times the height, you're going to get the volume of that cylinder. Then you need to always write it down before you start. That way you can. They say to the nearest, what? To the nearest cubic yeah, inch, how many would you have? One. One. So one cubic inch would be the answer. They want you to round it off to the nearest hole. There is no hole over here. The seven will tell us to round it up to one. Right now it's zero. You don't have any holes. So they're asking us to round it off to the nearest hole. You'd have one. Question back there. I guess I don't understand why the decimal, whenever you multiply, I don't know. Okay, when you multiply decimals, and we'll get into that two weeks from now, we'll start there. But um, decimals, when you multiply, you count the number of places you have after the decimal in your problem. And you have to make sure you have the same number of numbers after the decimal in your answer. So we have one, two, three, four pla decimal places in our problem. I had to count and have one, two, three, four decimal places in my answer. Because what's happening, you're multiplying here hundredth times hundredth. Mm -hmm. You see? Mm -hmm. And so hundredth times hundredth will give you tenths, hundredths, thousands, ten thousandths. So it had to end up being ten thousandths. And so then I multiplied it then times 1.5. So now I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 places in my problem. I had to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 places in my answer. Because now I'm multiplying 10 thousandths times tenths, which will give me 100 thousandths, which is what you get there. In other words, if I broke this into the fraction that it is, that says 3 and 14 hundredths times 16 hundredths. That's what this says as a fraction. 3 and 14 hundredths times 16 hundredths. I have to change this to an improper fraction. That would be 314 hundredths times 16 hundredths. Okay? Then I'd have to multiply 314 times 16, which is what I did to get 5024. I'd get 5024. Then I'd have to multiply 100 times 100, and I'd get 10 thousandths. 5024 10 thousandths. That's what this says. 5024 10 thousandths. It's just easier to do it by counting than by changing them into fractions and doing all of that. But it says the same thing. So you take care of the, when I multiply, when I just did my numbers and multiply and got the 5024, I, I didn't even take into consideration these decimals, see. I acted like it was 314 times 16. That would have been 5024, but it's not. It's 3 and 14 hundredths times 16 hundredths. So I had to account for that by putting in my decimal in the right place. But the easy way is just to know however many places you have here, you count them. And when you get your answer, you count and make sure you have the same number behind the decimal in your answer. And then you'll have the correct answer.
If I needed five and I only had it four numbers here when I counted back, I'd have to put a zero there and then put my decimal. Because I have to account for the places. Okay? That, I think so. I yeah. think I got it. And we'll go over it again when we go through um, multiplying decimals. Typically, we would have started with fractions this week. But it goes so quickly, and we never get to really get into geometry. I know, that's why I'm so lost. And that's all right. So, and that's why, uh, and then you don't have to know how to do it right now. What I say to people when you're hearing it, if it makes sense, what I'm saying to you, that's all that needs to happen. When you get to it, then you'll understand it. Because it should make sense whether you know how to do it or not. It should logically, just in the words, make sense to you what I'm doing. And for you to do it right now, don't even worry about it, number one. We're going to start back over at the beginning. But the people that have gone through eight weeks already, they typically get cheated out of that last week because we never get to put enough into the geometry and the algebra a lot of times. And a lot of times at this point, that's all they need to test. So we will start over again, and we'll get back to this again. And when we get back to this again, you'll say, oh, that's what they were talking about because then it will all make sense. But as long as it just makes sense, if it gets too confusing, then what we'll do is let you work in the lab on Aztec while we're going through this, because I don't want to confuse you and don't want you to think, oh, I'll never get to be able to do that, because it's a logical progression I know, that's this. how I was feeling at the beginning. I was yeah. like, oh, my God. No, you're, you're not meant to know this already. <laughs> okay. And I, I thought that I would have said that in orientation, but um, don't worry about that. Okay. Ask question, the dumb question is one unasked. That's right. But a lot of it, like I said, at this point, you're not expected to understand. We're reviewing some of what we've already gone over. Last week we went over, um, last week we talked about area, perimeter, and volume. So they already knew some of this. And we're just really just finishing it up. So don't feel bad if you don't, because we will go through everything again. Jeff? Yes, when I was taking the test, that's the only thing that was holding me back. And passing the math was the elder from the geometry. Yeah, for a lot of people. Yeah. I want to get right quick to look at page 256. For those of you who don't have a book, I'm going to make a copy of 257 for you to work on tonight. And then, and then there's one more thing tomorrow that I want to work on, and that's the Pythagorean theorem. And that's on every test, and we need to get to that. And then we will have gotten through almost everything. Is it A plus B equal A and B? C squared equals A squared plus B squared. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's the what? Pythagorean theorem. Mm -hmm. 256, the same kind of thing that we've been doing earlier tonight. The area of the figure at the right, they want us to find area, which means they want us to find all those squares inside, right? But this is an awkward figure. How are you going to find the area of this figure? Cut it out and make it into a couple of figures. They give you an example. They went straight across. And they're going to find the area of that big rectangle at the bottom, the 10 by 12. Then they're going to find the area of the 3 by, how do they know what x is up there? What is that space up there equal? Uh-huh, what? They subtracted 8 from 12, you see? The entire line down there is 12. It says from there to there is 8, so from there to there has to be 4 to make up 12. Everybody follow that? So now we have a little rectangle at the top, 4 by 3, and we have a big one at the bottom, 10 by 12. They figured the area for both and just added it together. Make sense? Mm -hmm. That makes sense? Okay. If I want to find the area of that big space there, this is 8, this is 12, 3 at the top, this is right 3, mm -hmm. and this is 10. Okay. Area is side times side. Okay. If I do 10 times 12, I'm only getting this space in here. Mm -hmm. See? Ten, time, oh, Ten times 12. Yep. 
is only this space here. Right? Mm -hmm. Follow that? Is it the same it's one? It's on the opposite side. Oh, it's over yeah. there. Okay, this one's 10. Okay. Okay. And this 10 is for this whole thing. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Right? So if I did 10 times 12, I'm getting all of this. See what I mean? If I do 10 times 12, I'm saying that it's 12 all the way this way, and it's 10 all the way this way, but it's not 12 all the way this way because this space is empty, right? So I could um, figure it several ways. I could figure this whole thing and get 120, right? But that would be this whole thing. I need to subtract this empty space out of there. The empty space is 8 times 3, right? If I subtract 24 out of there, I should get what's left over. Right? Make sense? What did you subtract? I subtracted this space here that's empty. 8 times 3. Okay. 24. Mm -hmm. That's that one there. Okay. Or I could have said, okay, I'm not going to do all the way up to there. Mm -hmm. Let me just do to here. How tall is here to here? Uh, 